So welcome, uh, my, my name is Sherry Forsyth and I'm a peak performance coach uh, living in South Africa. I'm doing a series this month on the invisible illnesses. In other words, the illnesses that can't be seen, uh, but the sufferers are, are battling either with bad fatigue, lots of muscle or joint pain, inflammation, uh, there might be nausea, there might be headaches, uh, but uh, the people don't actually look really ill. And so what happens is that the person who is suffering uh, can often get quite, uh, quite uh, bad comments, if I can put it that way, uh, int intimating that maybe they're just lazy or they are hypochondriacs or whatever it may be. And um, so what we're trying to do in these videos is, is uh, just increase the awareness of the the people that are surrounding us particularly so that they know actually what we are going through and therefore can maybe treat us with a little bit more uh, empathy and compassion. So today I welcome my brother Mark from Cambridge in the UK. Um, he is going to be speaking to us about chronic fatigue syndrome, yuppie flu, ME, um, whatever you want to call it. So welcome Mark. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I think let's just kick right into it by, by me asking you, what actually is a chronic fatigue syndrome? Uh, chronic fatigue, fatigue syndrome known as C CFS and uh, ME, which is myalgic encephalomyelitis, are uh, chronic fatigue illnesses, um, most of which have um, uh, a root in some kind of viral illness that a person has suffered that causes catastrophic changes to uh, their physiology um, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's an offshoot of, of those viral illnesses. The core um, problem with, with ME or CFS is fatigue. Um, the core symptom is fatigue. You get other fatigues with it, other um, symptoms with it like sore joints and muscles, uh, headaches, um, but the, the debilitating factor is the fatigue. So how, when, when you talk about fatigue, how debilitating is it actually? Like, if you can give us maybe a few examples of mm. when, when you are relatively bad, what you, mm. what you can't do. Um, I, I think I've got um, two good examples. Um, uh, when I was suffering from ME at my lowest, um, the the, the um, trip from the lounge up to my bedroom, which is consists of thirteen stairs, uh, was was immense. I often would have to stand at the bottom of the stairs and just gather my strength to climb them in order to go to bed. Uh, the second one, when I'm when I was really ill. Um, and, and you do go up and down. Uh, so there were times when I was so tired uh, or so fatigued that I barely had the energy to brush my teeth. Um, so those for me are the two practical examples. And I, I measure, even today, I measure how I'm feeling by uh, the um, amount of effort it takes to climb stairs. Likewise. Uh, so for listeners out there, whether you're watching this video um, uh, live or whether you are uh, watching the rebroadcast, um, I know exactly what my brother's speaking about and that I too have suffered from chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, I want to, to ask you, Mark, are there two different kinds of fatigue that you experience? Yes. So um, tiredness from a, 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 a long day's work or a long week's work or physical tiredness after a marathon or a, a, some endurance type event um, or uh, something of that nature, that is, is a tiredness that gets better as soon as you rest. So having done a marathon or an endurance event or worked a hard week, normally by Saturday or Sunday or the day after the event, you start feeling uh, the benefits of a good night's sleep. The problem with uh, fatigue from uh, CFS or NME is that 
you have what uh, the experts call unrefreshing sleep. So you wake up in the morning as fatigued as you were the night before. And uh, my wife always says she's got a mental picture of me sitting on the edge of my bed with my head hanging down, um, just not having the energy to shower, let alone shower, get ready, and then still do, uh, you know, go to work. Um, so there is a huge difference between fatigue and tiredness. And uh, for me, the encouragement was when I went to my first um, appointment with an occupational therapist. Uh, I said, I used the word fatigue and she said, she, straight away, she said, that's different from tiredness. And so I knew I was speaking to someone who understood what, uh, how debilitating the fatigue can be. Absolutely. Yeah. And, mm. and uh, you know, I also think in, in addition to try and help people to understand when you fatigue, sometimes you don't need the sleep. Uh, it's not that kind of fatigue. It's actually um, localized muscular fatigue, which would explain yes. why it's so difficult to brush your teeth because yes. the muscles in that arm are actually, they feel like they have run a marathon. Yes. Um, so yes. so it's, it's, it's the localized uh, fatigue in the muscles as well as a feeling of um, sometimes it is that you just can't open your eyes. You need to get on the bed and, and have a good sleep. Yeah, um, yeah. Which most, uh, most people don't really understand that there's, there's the two different A difference, things. yes. So yes. Mark, I mean, what, what was your journey or your process to um, actually getting the diagnosis? Okay, so I've had, um, I've had Emmy five times. Uh, the first time I had it was um, when I was uh, about 30 years old. Um, and I had um, a viral infection called brucellosis. Um, and uh, I woke up one morning feeling, feeling absolutely awful. Um, and it lasted a couple of weeks. I went to see a GP. Uh, this is when we were still living in South Africa. I went to see a GP and he just said to me, look, you have to rest. Um, uh, I've had it, as I say, um, four or five times since then. Um, the last time I had it was um, uh, it lasted for 18 months and was, was the most debilitated I've been. Um, uh, th th that time it started with bronchitis. So the triggers are normal, uh, normally some sort of viral illness could be, I've had ME resulting from inner ear infection, um, uh, bronchitis, um, and it starts very quickly. It's, it's not quite overnight, but almost overnight. Um, the last time I had it, I, I'd been suffering with um, uh, frequent migraines, more frequent than, than was the norm. Uh, for about two years and the fatigue that accompanies a migraine just seemed to last longer and longer so i was in a cycle of uh, a migraine fatigue just start to come out from the fatigue just start to recover and then another migraine almost a weekly cycle and so that's when i started going to the to, to my gp here with with uh, not not worried about the migraines per se um, but worried about the fatigue um, being self-employed, I was struggling to, to work a full day. Um, uh, uh, the, the GP, over a course of about 18 months, my GP changed three times. And finally, um, the third GP said, look, I'm going to take you off that medication for, for migraines, which was beta blockers. I'm going to take you off the beta blockers because the migraines are a symptom. They're not the cause we need to deal with the fatigue, which is why you're getting migraines, because migraines is the body's way of shutting down. Anyway, so I was very grateful for that. And she also said, look, there's a path that we're going to go. So she prescribed um, amitriptyline, which helps with the migraines and other things. We can maybe talk about that later. Um, and then she left. <laughs> um, but uh, in the meantime, I had sort of got into the system um, and uh, the um, a locum that I saw said, I'm going to um, put you forward uh, for inclusion um, in, in the local ME clinic. Well, not quite local, but um, fairly local. So I got an appointment at, at the ME clinic and they have a very um, useful 
questionnaire and asking a whole bunch of questions. And one of them is, what are the symptoms? And there were about 15 or 20 symptoms, and I probably had 90% of them. So when I went into the clinic, they were able to say, we have no doubt, given your positive responses to the questions, we have no doubt that you have ME. Can and I then it was a quick, yeah. Quickly. What kind of symptoms were you checking there? I mean, you mentioned um, headaches. Sorry? You mentioned mm -hmm. headaches. What yes. other symptoms were there? Headaches, sore throat. Um, sorry, when they talk about headaches, they said unusual type of headaches. So in other words, a new headache. Um, joint pains, muscle pains, uh, sore throat, um, uh, loss of balance, um, uh, inability to think clearly. So um, that's like the brain fog that people talk about. It's exactly a brain fog, yes. It's exactly a brain fog. Um, so, um, yeah, th that's th those, sort of, uh, those sort of symptoms. So they had a whole list of oh, probably 15 or 20 um, which helps them diagnose because, unfortunately, ME or CFS can't be diagnosed. There's no test to diagnose. I had blood tests uh, probably for, I must have had 15 or 20 sets of blood tests in, in a, uh, about a 12-month period. Um, and, of course, they don't yield uh, um, a, a virus or anything that says, uh, this is ME. So there's no clear way to clinically um, say this person is, is suffering from ME. The only diagnosis is once they've excluded everything else, then they, they focus on what is your um, quality of life now? And that's where those questions come in. And from that, they, they, they can, can, can diagnose. But a GP generally won't, won't diagnose. Okay. And, and, and the, the underlying thing is the fatigue that you just haven't recovered from, as you say, a viral infection or whatever. And yes. uh, in, in the old days, they used to say, if you've had that debilitating fatigue for over six months, uh, yes. added to the symptoms that you're speaking about, that generally yes. will give you a diagnosis. Exactly. But, important to many um well i think G doctors are, are becoming more aware of it now that it is a real thing it's not just you know in your mind um mm. uh and i think that that is important for uh people who might be suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome to maybe get a second opinion if their doctor's saying there's nothing wrong with you uh, yes. feeling absolutely terrible yes absolutely Absolutely. Okay, so, so that was how you were you were finally diagnosed, um, uh, Mark. Um, you spoke also about the fact that you've had it five times. So, mm. what I want to ask is: Is the illness always there and needs yes. to be managed? And then yes. the five times, like when it flares up badly. Yes. Yes. So the first time I understood that was from uh, the occupational therapist. Um, when I made a comment like, uh, I live in fear of overdoing something and then going back into ME. And she said, no, ME is with you always. It's a bit like malaria or bilharzia, where once you have it, it's in your, it's in your body. Um, and what happens with ME sufferers, um, you, you have peaks and troughs, um, but you may be well, um, and then uh, a crisis, whether it's physical or emotional, um, uh, will, will create stress. Your body gets overworked, overtired, and you, you have a flare-up of ME again. So essentially, it, it's always lurking, and the key is to, is to manage it well. And the occupational therapist said, in fact, she used my case as a sort of um, encouragement to others, to say that if you manage your disease well, your illness well, then it's possible to still live a productive life. Um, it's it's the, the, the management, which we might talk about later, the management is key. No, I agree with you. Uh, and it, it, it's always, it will, it's an ongoing thing. Um, so very mm. often the people who, who seem to, to get uh, chronic fatigue are the people who are very driven anyway. So naturally, the minute we get a little bit of energy, we push again, and um, uh, you you won't feel tired when you actually are 
doing that extra long walk or that exercise or yeah. working. Uh, it's a thing called payback where two or three days later it will hit yes. you. And that yes. makes it very hard to manage because you can't always do what you feel like doing because you know yes. that you might pay for it later. And exactly. I think you've hit the nail on the head. The management of it is absolutely essential. Yes. Uh, to, to manage your, your energy is one of the biggest challenges. And if you can do it well, um, you can live a very productive and very busy life. Sure. But, but you've always got to be aware that you could uh, top, tip yourself over into um, another flare up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the, the difficulty, the, the, one, of the, one of the difficulties from a mental point of view is you don't know how long it's going to last. And so you wake up feeling so dreadful in the morning thinking, I've got to go to work. You come home exhausted. Um, your weekends are spent trying to recover. And at the back of my mind is always the fact, I don't know how long I'm going to be like this for. And, and that is a terrible, uh, it's terribly difficult to cope with that emotionally and mentally. So if I could just interject here in that I was first mm. diagnosed many years ago, uh, in about 1987. And um, uh, just to give you an idea of when you manage your illness, what, what for the listeners out there, uh, what you can do. Uh, so I work a full day, I... Uh, um, I exercise regularly. In fact, um, I run 21 Ks and I'm only limited to 21 Ks because of my age, really not, not the ME. I don't want to run further than that. Um, uh, however, I manage my energy very carefully through the week. And yeah. in the yeah. evenings when, when we go out, I know that if, um, if we have like a past midnight night out, Definitely for the next two days, I need to take it very easy. But yep. what I have found is that if I do tip myself over now, where it used to take uh, possibly three weeks to recover fully, mm. now it'll mm. take one or two days. Yeah. So that gives you a lot of hope to, uh, to people who might be sitting out there with uh, very low energy. Is that mm. the management, if you can manage it properly, and we all are different, but if you can manage exactly. your own energy properly, listen to your body, uh, yeah. it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So also for the listeners that are watching, if you are suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome and possibly have symptoms that we haven't spoken about that you find particularly challenging, please uh, pop a comment in the comment box below. And uh, we'll, as we say, we're starting the conversation on how to manage chronic fatigue syndrome. Mm. Um, so, Mark, what do you think are your main challenges? What have been your main challenges with this disease? Um, well, we've, we've talked about fatigue and, and the main challenge is lack of energy. So you have to, as you said, you have to plan your activities really well. Oh. Um, and those activities that take a lot of energy, some of them you just have to say, well, I can't do that anymore. Um, uh, um, also, you need when you when you plan your your week or your day, you have to take into consideration there will be times when you just can't work or you just can't do what you plan to do. Um, uh, the second challenge that I face is something they call malaise, which is flu-like symptoms that recur. Um, so I have um, almost a constant sore throat. I have headaches just about every day. Um, I tire very easily, um, although at times I feel physically strong back the way I used to feel. Um, when I'm working or doing something physical, I, I do get tired very easily. So it's a real challenge to be, ab to be able to say, I used to be able to do all these things. I know I can't do them anymore. Um, so just, uh, just a, a, a small example, um, I'm a drummer. Um, and so I would often put headphones on and through my, uh, through my iPod or through my computer, I would drum to music for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, just enjoying it. Uh, I now am able to manage about three songs and I'm done. So 
that's frustrating, but it's also encouraging in that I am making progress because when I was in the depths of ME, I didn't pick up drumsticks for uh, probably 18 months. I just didn't have the energy. I didn't have the energy to get on my bike, which is the other thing that I really enjoy. I used to do um, endurance mountain bike events. Um, and uh, so um, sort of uh, full day things, seven or eight, well, not eight hours, but seven hour uh, uh, duration. Um, and I'm now able to do about a 4K return ride to the river and back. Um, having said that, it is frustrating, but it's also really encouraging knowing that I've come from where I couldn't get on my bike at all. Uh, I'm now able to do one ride a week. I'm able to walk uh, sort of 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, but I, again, as you said, you have to be careful that you don't overdo and then uh, so that you don't get hit uh, with payback. So I guess my, my, my main challenges were just being able to cope uh, and adjust the things I used to do to what I can cope with now. I think what you said there is so valuable um, uh, to look back at when you were at your worst yeah. and so yeah. grateful for what you can do now is yeah. a very positive way of looking at it as opposed to being where you are and looking at all the things you can't do anymore. Exactly. And that will put you into more of a, a negative tailspin. Yes. Yes. So, so um, uh, that is a very, very valuable tip, is don't look at what you can't do, but yeah. look at what you can do in comparison to how you yeah. were when you first, when you first were diagnosed. Yeah. And then yeah. you can actually feel, wow, this is amazing. And immediately yeah, there's a more positive mindset, uh, and yeah. that will help your, your, the physical as well. I also yes. want to ask, Mark, do you have... Um, uh, one of the symptoms being brain fog. Yes. Um, do you s battle to find the words or uh, sometimes yes. almost not quite slur your words, but, but the, definitely part of the confusion, the brain fog, is your, it affects your speech? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, obviously, um, uh, with age come declining abilities to find words anyway and to memorize and to remember things. But um, I would find, well, I find that um, I can't think of simple words um, when I'm wanting to describe something or I, I can't remember the name of a place where I want to go to. Um, it, it, the, the, the benefit is um, with um, CDs and books and DVDs and all that, I don't have to buy new ones anymore because I can't remember the ones that I've listened to or read. Um, so that's short-term memory is terrible. And it didn't used to be like that. Um, and is it only so, yeah. if you are really battling or is it all the time? It's all the time. It's all the time. So because, I, because the last time I had Emmy, it was for so long, for 18 months, I think it has affected, permanently has affected certain things. Um, and uh, one of the comments that I heard on a, a, a DVD that I found quite useful, uh, the doctor speaking said, what, what you need to understand is that ME or CFS affects every part of your life. So it affects your relationships. It affects your, your um, family life. It affects your finances. Um, um, obviously it affects your work um, so it is a it is although it's it's uh, rooted in fatigue there's lots of um, repercussions uh, of that fatigue and lack of ability to do things so that leads us on to the the next question very very um, easily mm. how do you balance everything that you've got to do how, how do you so basically we're saying how do you manage what you've okay. Okay, the, the, for me, um, and <laughs> my wife always uh, laughs when I say this, I, I, I say to her, I have to be disciplined about resting, yes. which sounds a bit of a, but there are times when I would love to just jump on my bike when the sun's shining and the birds are, are singing, I just want to get on my bike and ride to the river, and I know I can't. So um, I think one of the, 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 uh, most difficult things you can do, but also the most productive 
is to say, I can't do that anymore. So for example, in my life, I used to do a lot of pro bono work for various clients. And I had to uh, jettison them one by one. And uh, they were all aware that I, I was ill. Um, but I had to say to them, look, I just, I just can't do your work anymore. So that was quite difficult because in every case, it was difficult to find someone who would be prepared to give their time for nothing to do what I did. Um, and so I, I just uh, got rid of, as, as a harsher word, but I got rid of all the things that I didn't need to do. Um, I also went through things that I enjoyed doing, um, but didn't have energy for. So for example, I had to pull out of the two bands that I play in. Uh, I just said, uh, you know, I just don't have the energy to do that, so I'm going to have to pull out. And it's awful because you feel you're letting people down, but at the same time, uh, one, of the, one of the sort of key tips or hints is you have to put yourself first. And sometimes that's difficult, even with, with uh, chores around the house. There are times when I say to, to my wife, Jo, um, I just don't have the energy to, to vacuum or, or to do the dishes or whatever. So um, it, it affects everything. But so you need to be able to say, I, I can't learn to say, no, I can't do that anymore. So, so what you do is you, you limiting your busyness. Actually. Yes. I mean, yes. Say no. Uh, and it's very difficult to say no, particularly to the program. Yes. It's very difficult to say no, maybe to uh, social engagements. There would be a lot of fun, yes. but you know that actually you are too tired to go. So, um, uh, yeah, so maybe what is the, uh, what is the impact on your social life? Well, we just, we just don't have any. Um, uh, for um, our last um, uh, anniversary, I think it took us nine months before we managed to get out to dinner. <laughs> so you just have to, you just have, um, I don't do evening meetings. So with some of the, guy, the guys that I was doing pro bono work for, the first step for me was to say, I don't do evening meetings anymore, which is difficult. Um, so I had to send all my reports by email or whatever. So it's not quite ideal. Um, so uh, no evening meetings. And that is now filtered down to uh, very little social interaction during the week um, uh, and um, uh, traveling is quite tiring as well so I don't travel with with my wife to go and visit her parents um, I also strange it might sound strange but I also limit um, or I have to pick my times when I uh, chat to people my sons or family or whatever because there are many times when I, when I just don't have the energy to talk to someone. And it sounds ridiculous, but a conversation is really tiring. And it's worse in a, in a, in a group setting. Um, I've, also, I've also stopped going to church, which for us has been, for me, is quite a, quite a radical step. Um, but it was just the fact that I have to sit or be um, active for two hours and I have to relate to people um, or be part of the band or whatever it was. There, there's, there was always, it's always um, requires some output from myself. And I just didn't have the energy for that. So socially, um, very, very limiting. For, in my particular case, not everybody's like that. But um, I find social occasions particularly tiring. And so, Mark, when you say you, you, you kind of, uh, you know, work during your week and then you recover over weekends, what does that look like for recovering over a weekend? So, um, uh, I'm sort of in a, in, a, in a recovery process now, but when I was in, in, at my worst with the ME, I would um, work a couple of hours. I worked for different clients. I would go into the city, um, work at various offices. Uh, for a couple of hours, come home, spend the whole afternoon in bed. I'd get up for supper and, and maybe a bit of um, TV watching or chatting with my wife. I'd be in bed by eight and I'd be asleep by half past eight and I'd sleep until uh, seven the next morning or so. Um, so uh, uh, that was um, 
that was was probably uh, probably the pattern for the week. Probably the best way of saying it. That's my pattern for the week. The weekends, I used to spend ninety percent of my weekends in bed. Um, I, so not always that I didn't have the energy, but I was sort of trying to recover so that I could work the next week. So yeah, ninety percent of my weekend was spent in bed. And would you um, be sleeping then for the? No. So you. No. Physically resting, you don't have to sleep uh, the whole week. No, yeah. In fact, um, early on, one of the one of the tips that I um, read about uh, said, "Beware of sleeping too much, because you don't want your body to start of go go into a negative cycle physically." Um, and then, when I went to see uh, one of the first GPs I spoke to, um, he said to me, "What you need to be careful of is." At the moment, you are living as if you are about 85 years old in terms of the amount of rest you have to do. And so your body is starting to think that you, you're aging before you, you, you actually are. So you need to be very careful not to do nothing. Um, and so when I'm resting, I try and do um, mental things. Uh, I watch uh, lots of videos and DVDs and discussions about various things, trying to keep mentally awake. Even games that you can play on on a, 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 on a tablet, um, those help. Um, uh, I also um, find that um, when I was resting, I would I would have a pen and paper next to my bed, so I'd be able to work in a way while I was resting, keeping my mind tapping, uh, turning over. So I'd jot notes and things for meetings or whatever. Um, so uh, the rest was physical rest, sometimes mental rest, um, but not sleeping an awful lot. A little nap in the afternoon sometimes if I'm particularly tired. Um, but generally, the, 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 that's why I said it's, it needs discipline. To stay in bed for a whole afternoon it really does take some discipline, but I know that it was for the, for the best. You knew why you were doing it. Exactly. So, uh, appealing to our listeners out there, if you have certain tips that have really worked well for you, uh, I encourage you to uh, put it into the comment box and who knows how many people you might help just by your tip on how to deal with chronic fatigue. Um, so, Mark, is there anything um, particular that we haven't spoken about uh, that you um, would like to add in? Uh, I was I was asked recently to um, give advice to uh, a guy who was recently diagnosed with ME, um, and um, I, I said to him a couple of things. One of one of the uh, one of the critical things is to read as much as you can about the illness, research as much as you can. Uh, America, South Africa, and England are three countries that are particularly good um, with ME in terms of the literature and uh, the discussion. Um, also read or watch as many positive testimonies uh, that you can of people who have gone through the illness and are positive about it and give tips on, on how they coped. Um, the third thing I would do is I would, I would say get into some sort of forum um, uh, there's an excellent one in, in the UK, uh, an excellent website called the Optimum Health Clinic, which has uh, regular updates and uh, newsletters. Uh, they sent a video, uh, sorry, a, a DVD that was particularly helpful, which consisted of um, three or four people talking through their story. Um, all of them positive. Um, and, and that really helps. And also, is it, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Only for chronic fatigue or is it for lots of different illnesses? Uh, it's not just for chronic fatigue. It is for fibromyalgia, I think. Um, a lot any of things. Yes, yes. Because a lot of the symptoms are the same. So if you have glandular fever, for example, one of the core um, symptoms of glandular fever is fatigue. You know, and long-lasting fatigue at that. Yeah. So th th that's what I would say. You know, just research, 
get involved, get onto um, uh, social media, obviously would have, I don't use social media myself, but obviously social media would have um, discussions going on. Find um, um, a community that you can link in with and, and get encouraged through, through what you read and, and hear. No, that's, that's, that's fabulous. Um, so I thank you, Mark, for doing this interview sure. with us, especially yeah. knowing that energy is, is a bit uh, of a problem sometimes. Mm. And, um, uh, if you would, would like in future to poss possibly we should do one on the more mental side. We've spoken a lot today about the physical side. Yes. That yes. is, you know, that is um, quite concrete to deal with. But in fact, I think the biggest challenge in all of these autoimmune and invisible illnesses is to be able to retain positivity, despite yes. actually the fact that you are doing less than you used to do or you're not feeling so yes. good. So yes. um, who knows, listeners, watch the space. We might well have a, a second uh, interview on the, the more the mental side or the positivity that one needs to embrace in order to deal with, uh, with chronic fatigue. Mm. Um, I ask you to look out for the next uh, video next week, which is going to be on Parkinson's disease. Um, if you, I've already done one interview with uh, a friend of mine, and this is another chap who I haven't ever interviewed before, talking about his journey with Parkinson's. So if you're wanting to go and have a look at the videos that I have previously done, uh, pop onto Facebook, uh, Sherry Forsyth Coaching is my site and uh, under the videos just click on the videos and you'll be able to see there all the people that i've interviewed um, about the illnesses uh, whether it's on facebook live or on zoom uh, and lastly if you have any questions queries or comments um, that you feel you don't want to make uh, public in in the comment box below please feel free to drop me an email on sherry for spelled c-h-e-r-r-i f-o-r-s-y-t-h at gmail.com and uh, we'll do our best to see if we can answer your questions so once again listeners thank you for your time and thank you for listening